Hi, I'm Nathan with Holston Gases. Over the past couple years, there's been a lot of discussion on reducing welding fume, whether from an EPA standpoint or an OSHA standpoint. Now, one of the methods that can be used to reduce welding fume or to show that you're making efforts to reduce welding fume is by changing the welding process or change the consumables in the welding process. Many manufacturers today use a 1 16th or a, let's just say an all position flux cord electrode with 100% CO2. This, can, th this could be the worst case scenario for overall welding fume and the manganese portion of the welding fume. So one way to reduce the welding fume in this situation would be to change to a argon gas blend. And so today I wanted to show briefly the differences of welding with 100% CO2 versus 75 argon 25 CO2 and let you see for yourself the different levels of fume um, that's emitted from the welding process in this situation. And then we'll talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of using each shielding gas. So this is the fume at 275 amps, 29 volts with 100% CO2 as the shielding gas. Now contrast that with this. This is 75 argon, 25 CO2. Same weld parameters, 275 amps but 27 and a half volts because of the lower CO2 content. And now we're comparing them side by side with the 7525 on the left and the 100% CO2 on the right. So as you can see, it made a big difference. You could see clearly that the 75 argon 25% CO2 produced less welding fume than the 100% CO2. Now before you go out and start changing your welding parameters and changing your gas blends, there are a few other uh, considerations that you should take um, just to make sure that you don't compromise the quality of your current process. So some of the considerations that you want to take when making this change are the amount of penetration that you'll get with 7525 versus 100% CO2 um, at the same amperage and voltage levels. And so here in this macro you can see the broader penetration that 100% CO2 offers compared to 75 argon 25 CO2 and this is common when making this change. 100% CO2 is far more tolerant to mill scale and rust versus 7525. The density of the gas, uh, 7525 doesn't offer the same effectiveness um, from a shielding standpoint as a shielding gas as 100% CO2 because 100% CO2 is denser, a little bit heavier than a 7525 gas mixture. Therefore, the 100% CO2 provides better shielding, especially when you're working in an environment where there's winds or drafts in the area. And then lastly, MIG guns are all rated at 100% CO2. So the duty cycle is reduced when we're using a mixed gas. Now, there's plenty of advantages also to talk about when we make this change. So one of the big roadblocks that we see when making this transition is that argon costs considerably more than 100% CO2. And we've got to remember that the cost of welding is largely 85% labor and overhead and less than 15% gas wire, equipment, and electricity. So when we look at this process and we look at making that change, what we've got to realize is, is that when we change from 100% CO2, we can increase our deposition rate naturally uh, to, when we use 7525. So the way we can confirm this is, at the same wire feed speed, we measured the plate prior to welding and then we measured it after welding and compared the difference with the arc on time. And this gave us our deposition rate. And so for the 100% CO2, we measured a deposition rate of 9.6 pounds per hour. With the 7525, we did the same measurements and we got a, a deposition rate of 10.4 pounds per hour. So a nice increase in deposition rate that will naturally allow you to weld faster. And so our travel speed was also increased one to two inches per minute on average. And so this can mean a lot over a year's time when it comes to productivity and increasing the throughput through the shop. If you have any questions about making this transition, don't hesitate, don't hesitate to call your local Holstein Gases supplier.